Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to go out and do some diamond mining, something we have not done for a little while. And I'll be quite honest, my diamond supplies are looking fairly sparse over here. I have a chest that is ostensibly for storing diamonds in, and it has nothing in it whatsoever. It does still have plenty of diamonds here in the item filter, but we need a few more flowing in before they can start filtering down into the chest here. The barrel on the top doesn't have anything in it, and I could honestly use a few diamonds to duplicate all of the armor trims that we have gotten in previous previous episodes. If you think back to the Trail Ruins excavation episode, we got four armor trims from that, which I am interested in trying out. But of course, in order to try out any of these armor trims, we want to make sure that we can duplicate them first so we don't lose them in the process. This chest here has a few extras and we even got a couple from the most recent trips to the Woodland Mansion and also we scored one from the Pillager Outpost. So I believe in one of these, I forget which one it ended up in, but yeah, this says smithing template in it there. We've got our sentry armor trim, we've got our vex armor trim, and in the other one that we took back from the other Woodland Mansion, we've got three more Vex armor trim in there. So we got eight of those. We got enough of those that we don't need to spend diamonds on them, but the rest of them I would like to get extra backup copies of. So the fun part about that is that we have recently updated this world to Minecraft 1.20.2, which is a minor update that has improved some of the prospects for mining diamonds out there in the world. But the way Minecraft typically works is that the first time you generate chunks in an update, say like we started this world in Minecraft 1.20, all of the area around here, everywhere that we have explored in this area, generated the terrain completely using the terrain generation that was present in the 1.20 base update. And when you update your world, Minecraft does not overwrite any terrain that has already been generated. So down to the bottom of the world here, we should still be getting the same amount of diamonds we have since the beginning of this series. But if we go to a new area, somewhere that we have only generated since we arrived in Minecraft 1.20.2, we should find a bunch more diamonds generating down there and that is potentially a great thing for us because we need a good handful of diamonds so we should be going to where the diamonds are more likely to appear. So I want to do a bit of an experiment. We're going to sample the terrain both here and in new chunks to see how many diamonds we get from mining for about an hour. I'm going to start by digging down to the lowest levels of the world where we can expect diamond to generate somewhere around Y negative 57 or 58 and in the case of this area I'm fairly confident that digging underneath this ocean over here should yield the results we need since I have been back and forth on this ocean plenty of times. I'm pretty confident that the terrain over here was generated in the initial update since we went over there to talk to villagers over in the savannah biome and we've definitely been around these chunks for a while. I didn't want to start that too close to home because I'm fairly confident thanks to our explorations underneath the mountain with the cherry trees that there is a large area of the deep dark biome underneath my base so I'm slightly concerned about excavating down there. I don't want to dig into anywhere. The warden is going to be hassling me. On the other hand over here by the ocean the terrain is obviously a lot flatter there is less likelihood of the deep dark biome generating under here so hopefully if we dig down we shouldn't encounter any unforeseen surprises and we can get to work on setting up a diamond mine after we've done that i'm going to record the results in diamonds we're going to head back over to the woodland mansions where i found these allays because those were definitely generated in the most recent update in 1.20.2. This world has been in 1.20.2 for a while and I only went to the Woodland Mansions last week. So that terrain should be nice and fresh. I haven't done any mining over there, so it should be perfect opportunity to go down to the bottom of the world, see where those diamonds generate and compare it to the results we get from old terrain. As we've done previously, I'll be storing the results of each of our excavations inside a shulker box. So I'll empty out one of these, probably this one that just has all of the wooden items from our Woodland Mansion raid. I'll probably take material for a couple of storage chests as well, because we're probably going to be excavating a lot of deep slate, and I don't feel like just throwing that stuff on the ground and letting it despawn. So I'll fly on over here, we'll find a little divot in the landscape, and I'm going to start digging down so I can create a branch mine underneath this ocean biome. But naturally, I don't want the contents of this video to just be about branch mining. So in the second half of the video, after we've discussed the results, 
of our little experiment here, I'm going to come back and build some housing for the allays that we have gathered because I don't really want them floating around my base constantly and I think we can do some cool stuff with them. All right, we've dug a long staircase down and we are just now getting into deep slate levels. So another 50 levels or so in a staircase should be enough to get us down to the bottom of the world. And hopefully we don't run into any massive caves in the way. All right, here we are all the way down at Y negative 58. We're going to leave two storage chests at the entrance to the mine here. We're going to put all of these resources that we got from digging down in the staircase inside of here so we have a nice clean inventory. We're going to leave our shulker box here for now and we'll stash any diamonds or other precious resources that we find down here. But diamond generation should be the only thing that has changed. So here, at basically the bottom of the world, we're going to do our best to mine for an hour and get as many diamonds as we can. This is our 1.20 terrain sample. Wish me luck and I'll see you folks on the other side. And at the end of one hour of branch mining down here with tunnels every three blocks, I decided to go with three, but there wasn't really any particular logic behind that. We have, drum roll please, just over two stacks. Two stacks and a one diamond for a total of 129. 15 of which I got just from digging out this long pilot tunnel just to see how far we could get. And then I started digging out to either side, not for any specific length, just until I encountered some sort of obstacle like a lava lake, or until I figured I'd placed enough torches and gone enough in one direction and I decided to go back. In the process, of course, I did pick up a lot of deep slate and other resources. We got a bit of iron down here as well. We also ended up getting a little bit, if I have that in the shulker box here, of lapis and gold, and I've been tucking away all of the redstone dust I've been getting in my redstone shulker box, which I now have a comfortable amount, which is nice because I've started to run low on redstone as well. But that wasn't the main purpose here because redstone ore generation has not been altered in this most recent update. Diamond ore generation has. So it's time to go over to the woodland mansion area and see how that compares. Of course, I need to actually put the stuff in the shulker box here. Like I said, I was going to, there we go. And then we can pack all of this stuff away. I'll come back for all of these resources and we can shove those in our auto store storage system, but I'm going to head on over to that Woodland Mansion area. I'm going to do that on a live stream, which will be yesterday's live stream on Twitch by the time you folks are seeing this video. But before we pack the diamonds away in my storage system, I will make sure to leave them in a shulker box so that we can compare the exact numbers of diamonds we get from a one hour session branch mining. Hey folks, welcome back. So we're back from our second mining trip and I've been doing a little bit of tree farming with some allays over here. Got a few more of them collecting the mangrove leaves so that we can farm some mangrove wood. And I can show you the results of our second diamond mining operation over there in new chunks. And we've actually got a few more diamonds. So compare the results of the previous shulker box where we got two stacks and one diamond. This time around, we got two stacks and 24, which on its own might not be too conclusive. It might just be that we got lucky and found a little bit more diamond ore, but I did find seven diamond ore just digging down on the way to the level where I was gonna be mining at negative 58 in the world. So I'm fairly certain that there are more diamond ores to be found. Anecdotally, at least, it felt like I was encountering more as I went. And that's gonna be backed up by the code because Mojang said that they were updating the code to include more diamond ore at lower levels. But I think it's just kind of interesting that on our way down, we even dug through a couple of veins of diamond. And I just felt like silk touching those instead of fortuning them since we hadn't reached the level where we were going to be mining and I hadn't started the timer yet and everything. But we can keep those for whatever else we want to do. And in the meantime, that has been a fun experiment which has led to us having nearly four and a half stacks of diamonds that I can throw into my sorting system and those can end up getting sorted into the diamond chest over there. Not to mention we picked up a few other materials along the way. We've got plenty of raw gold and a little bit of extra lapis, which I've been condensing into blocks where I can, but we didn't notice any particular increase in the amount of gold or lapis you might expect down there, so it stands to reason that only the diamonds have been increased. But one of the other important things, for me at least, is that I got a bunch more redstone, which I've now condensed down into blocks, and we can use those to craft the different redstone components that we will need for a few other farms and whatnot coming down the pipeline. For the rest of today, though, we're going to focus once again on the allays, and the idea for how to store them came to me when 
I had set up a couple of them, as you might remember, to farm sniffer seeds from this enclosure. And I've actually repurposed those two for mangrove wood farming. But over here, this little one ended up getting into the chest boat that I had left here. And this chest boat did have a couple of buried treasure maps that I haven't gone after yet, but otherwise it wasn't really doing a whole lot. So I broke it thinking, yeah, no, we can make sure the uh, allay can be used for farming mangrove. But independently of that, before, when I noticed it had gotten into the boat, I had this notion of what if we store the allays two at a time in boats. Not necessarily chest boats, but ordinary boats. And I figure we can set up a home for them on the mountain where we can go by and anytime we need a couple of allays, we just break one of the boats containing the allays. We can grab a couple of leads to make sure they follow me or give them some items and they'll just fly on over and help us with whatever task we want to do. It certainly makes a change from them seeming like they're straining at the leash to pathfind towards the player because really they just want to follow the player around. So it's not like they have problems with being on the lead and when you get closer, they just kind of idle and float around you like this but it doesn't always look too great when you've got a bunch of them just trying to get over to you and being unable to so i like the idea of giving them some place to live in the meantime i might even do the same with the frogs here at some point just so we don't have so many critters tied up in front of my storage room but either way we're going to grab a few things because i came up with a fun idea for how we can get the allays into the boats for this we're going to need a dispenser and we're going to need to dip into our supply of iron ingots to craft a bunch more iron bars although on second thoughts having rescued them from captivity maybe iron bars are not what we should do this with so maybe we'll do this with glass panes instead make a couple of quick trades with a librarian villager to get hold of a bit more glass since i don't really want to smelt the sand for this and while i'm here this guy actually had a respiration 3 book that i traded a while ago and never put on my helmet so i'm gonna grab that real quick there we go okay so thanks to all of the lapis that we brought back from that mining expedition and all of the bones we've been getting from our skeleton and normal hostile mob farms we can make a bunch of a light blue stained glass which will turn into glass panes and that should be a decent amount to get us started and i'm gonna head over to this part of the mountain sort of where there's a little cave on the inside here and i'm thinking we're gonna do something with this We'll go through and light it up. And yeah, this is where somebody did mention in my comments a little while ago that there was a spider spawner somewhere inside the mountain. So uh, I guess we've just found that, huh? wonder if there's anything interesting in the chest. A bunch of bones. Uh, yeah, another music disc that we can add to our collection. A little bit of redstone, nothing too important. Because I like the idea of turning this little cave into something like a fairy grotto, except the fairies themselves, the allays in this case, are going to be easy access. They're going to be effectively like a vending machine for allays. And they're going to drop down from a setup we're going to have in the ceiling where we can load them into boats and have them stuck in here two at a time and they will land on a couple of blocks down here where we can simply break the boat to get them out and they can follow us out of the cave. So having taken the coordinates of the little drop that I made I think it should come out right about here and if I dig on down through the stone layers there we go that is our drop that is where the allays are going to emerge. So we can dress this up a little bit more from the outside either make it look like another kind of fairy grotto cave or even make it look like a little kind of house for the allays or something like that but for now I'm going to just take out a bunch of blocks inside of here and hollow out a space that we can use to work. And now that I'm actually figuring out the logistics of it, I've realized that we actually want the glass to go down this side like so. And there still needs to be a gap here for the allays to rest there in their boats, but we can basically wall off that section like that. And this is where we're going to be collecting the allays from. That looks about right. And just so the boats don't get stuck here, we're going to make sure we have glass panes going all the way up to the surface like this, where we can have some solid blocks that they connect to. And we're going to make sure that a water stream brings the allays down into this area. We're going to leave a sign here to block any water that might flow down from this side, but effectively what we're going to do is have the allays loaded into boats, which are going to float down here, and once they reach the end here, they'll simply fall in there. Thanks to the fact that boats don't end up giving you any kind of fall damage when they fall down there, they should be perfectly fine, and subsequent allays can come around and stack up on top of the previous set of allays in their boats, two by two. We're going to create this kind of loop of water for the allays to travel around, but we need to make sure that the boat will actually change direction and won't slow down at any point during this process. I've done a bit of testing in creative and I figured out the right combination of things to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that at this corner right here, where we want to transition from this straightaway into this straightaway, we're going to place a sign right here to make sure that this water doesn't flow backwards. I'm also going to make sure that this corner there is filled in with glass panes and that there's a couple of glass panes 
on that side as well. But once it's in this water stream, it should just harmlessly glide along this side of the wall. We want to make sure that our next water source starts on this block here, right next to this solid block. So I'm going to place a sign right there. That's going to stop the water from flowing back this way and is going to make sure it only flows in this direction. And the glass panes on either side are going to make sure that there isn't any friction against the wall as the boat turns a corner. We'll place another water source block in there and we should see that the water flows six blocks in this direction. But I might need to check my measurements here because right here the water is flowing for seven blocks and at the seventh block the boat will actually start to slow down. So I think we need to move all of this over so that the water is only flowing for six blocks. And somehow a cow has already made its way in here. <laughs> Get out of my water streams. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is put in a water stream on this side, but this side it's going to actually have a dispenser right here at the end, and that's what's going to dispense the boats. Boats can actually be dispensed out into a solid volume of water, and they will end up floating on top of the water if they're dispensed like this. So let me give you a quick example. If I put a stone button attached to this, we can pop that on there and there you go. The boat will end up on the surface of the water. It will float around here in a circle and will end up floating down into this catchment area where it should harmlessly drop down to the cave below. And if we step into this cave, presuming that there are a couple of allays waiting for us in the boat, we should simply be able to break the boat with an axe. The allays will pop out. We can use leads to guide them out of here or give them items and they will follow us. So yeah, what I have here is basically an idea for an allay Pez dispenser, more or less. Although this first part was really what sold me on the idea because what we have made here is a lazy river. <laughs> yes, it is the a lazy river. And if you think I didn't make this purely based on the pun, <laughs> then you don't know me very well. But enough of my talking, you folks probably want to see it in action. So I'm going to grab these two allays over here, both of whom already have items. So they should be absolutely happy to follow me up the mountain as I head towards the cave where we've set up the Alazi River. I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm just going to keep saying it until you guys like it. <laughs> but they should have no problem following me into this cave. Yep, here they are. And I think the most straightforward way of doing this is going to be to take away their items and give them something basic, like a block of stone. Because that way, if we throw a block of stone on the ground, both Alays should come speeding to pick it up. Although, right now I think the other one's having trouble pathfinding to me because it cannot see the block of stone. And right now my thought process is that if we throw a block of stone over here, then both the Alays are going to show some interest in picking it up and we can scoop them up in a boat <laughs> there we go and then they go around the lazy river making their way around each corner perfectly fine and then they drop into the pest dispenser that's perfect that's worked out very well i think the only major problem we're going to have with this is that the allays pathfinding is kind of organic so there isn't really a great way of guaranteeing that they make it inside of here i'm wondering if we swap the glass pane here for something like a fence gate that's open so that the allays can just float into the water stream here maybe that will help them they don't like making contact with water but at least kind of dipping down to get hold of that block might be enough. Let's try it with another pair of allays. But since this is a cherry wood mountain, I think we're going to make our boats out of cherry wood this time. In fact, here's what I really want to know. If I give the allays cherry planks instead of dark oak planks or stone to hold, will it look like they're driving a cherry boat? <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. And not that a boat like this is going to have a steering wheel, but you know, maybe they're rowing the boat. So far, I think getting them into this cave might be the biggest challenge, so I might at least bring them in there on leads since they have a tendency to wander off a little bit. But anyway, now if we throw our planks on the ground next to that and well we got one of them in there at least <laughs> and I think the uh, button ended up closing the trap door let's see if we can get the other one to fly into the boat real quick maybe if I throw one of the planks down here maybe this one will just get into the boat with his friend nope unfortunately looks like that didn't happen okay <laughs> we'll break this boat and we'll try again all right we'll pop the boat back in there we'll give this one more try throw a couple of blocks on the ground so that they stay interested throw a boat out there and again only one of them got in let's try putting the button on top of the dispenser so that it doesn't activate the uh, fence gate here now we'll leave a couple of cherry planks right there we got one of them in the boat oh the other one took a tiny amount of damage right there it sounds like but once again they do regenerate health so oh they got broken out of the boat on the turn because they weren't moving quite right this is more difficult than expected but the result is so good i'm kind of willing to give it another shot there we go we got them both in the boat that time are they going to go all the way around the river they are excellent and and yeah, them holding cherry planks in there is the most adorable thing. <laughs> Much as I don't want to, I'm actually going to break these two allays here out of their boat so that the cherry boat can just drop down harmlessly 
behind them. And you can see how easy it is for the LAs to get out from under a boat that's resting on top of their heads. So the deal with these two is we need to replace their stone blocks with some cherry planks just for the uniformity of the whole situation. Let's try that again. Let's see if we can get this down to a science. There we go. The LAs got in the boat. Perfect. They're making their way around the Alazy River. It's working splendidly this time around. Maybe cherry boats were the answer all along. So I'm going to fill the dispenser with a bunch more cherry boats. We're going to give the rest of the Alaze cherry planks. And two by two, we're going to load them into our brand new Pez dispenser. Okay, all of our LAs are now in the Pez dispenser, except for this final three. So I'm going to make sure that they follow me down into the cave. Hopefully all three of them made it up here to the mountain. Yep, there they are. They're all floating around outside the corner of here. And I've been laying this trail of breadcrumbs for them to kind of follow me in here. And then we throw a bunch of cherry wood right there. And then we pop out a boat and eventually a couple of them will get in there and they'll go along around the river. So now we just need to throw a couple more on the ground and dispense one final boat for the singular allay that is left. And those should all now have made it into this stack of allays in boats. And that's a really cool concept, I think. We can obviously do a little bit to dress this area up, but look at this. We just basically have an allay dispenser or an allay bank of sorts where they're all holding these cherry planks, which they are <laughs> determined to throw at me since a couple of them are still holding them from luring them in here in the first place. All of the boat paddles just look really weird coming out of the side of the glass there, but overall, I think this looks phenomenal. It's a really fun way of stashing the LAs and keeping them out of harm's way for the time being while we clear up this area around my base. And if I want any of them, I'll know to come up here and find them. I definitely want to do something to dress up this little mountain cave though, because right now it's just kind of carved into the hillside here. There's a little bit of room up the top here that we could decorate it somehow, but not a whole bunch. And of course, it needs to contain the Alazy River mechanism. So we can see what we can do about that. We'll, we'll try our best to come up with something, but I really like the design here. I think it's kind of a fun way of getting the LAs into boats and then dropping them on down here. And as you can see, it doesn't really take all that much in the way of resources. You'll need glass panes or iron bars either side to make sure that the boat can flow on down here, align it against the edge of a solid block like this every so often. And then over here, it should just float on into this chamber where once again, a, an iron bar basically halfway across that block still gives a room for basically a block and a half of the boat's hitbox to fall down in there. And I like the fact that they all end up in exactly the same position too. So it looks nice and uniform here in the Pez dispenser portion. Well, folks, that is where we're going to leave things for today. A bit of an eclectic episode, but I think you'll find that the lays and diamonds are kind of a similar color, and I guess that'll sort of do as a thematic tie-in. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.